As part of a cybersecurity awareness program, we'll be reviewing the common threats every employee faces on a regular basis. When you look at actual attacks ranging from small incidents to large-scale compromises, they all contain elements that a fundamental cybersecurity understanding might have prevented. In this portion, we'll address malware. Malware is the evil, malicious, and unwanted software that you desperately want to avoid getting. Malware costs individuals, companies, and governments more and more resources every year, and it requires everyone working together to prevent. Although many people just call everything a virus, malware is the big category. There are many different types of malware, and they each have their own unique mode of operation and behavior. But before we get into the specifics of how they operate, realize that modern malware looks quite a bit more like this. In other words, modern malware often has a variety of characteristics, and so while definitions are useful for understanding, realize that a single piece of malware can often take on many different forms. Having said that, let's take a quick look at some of the defining characteristics for some of the most common malware. The traditional malware is a virus. In general, a virus works to infect a file or a program to destroy, steal, or alter data. Viruses are very malicious, but often require user interaction in order to start the process. This often happens when a user clicks on a bad link, downloads an infected file, or installs a malicious program. Trojans are a little different. The primary characteristic about a Trojan is how it hides and evades detection. Trojans are often the malware you never knew was there. Many Trojans will wait for certain conditions or wait for a set amount of time before activating. Some Trojans hide in plain sight, disguised as an actual program pretending to be useful. So you think you downloaded a free program to help you out, but behind the scenes, the Trojan is going to work on your computer. Worms are often similar to viruses in the way that they infect files and resources, but the big difference about a worm is that a worm will not stop at one computer. Worms often are designed to aggressively spread across networks and take over the entire network, often without user interaction. Worms are especially dangerous to large organizations, and many of the most infectious pieces of malware are worms. Rootkits are a bit newer style compared to the first three more traditional types of malware. Rootkits are very sophisticated at avoiding detection and remaining on a system. They often exist on the computer outside of the operating system's vision and can't be detected by traditional means. Also, many rootkits will reinstall themselves after having their core files deleted, making them very persistent threat on infected machines. These next few subcategories refer to a few different types of smaller families of malware. Often they are considered their own category, but nevertheless they are malicious and undesirable software. The most popular of which is adware. Adware is software that typically does not openly damage your computer, but can cause a lot of pop-ups and advertisements that no one wants to deal with. Other than the nuisance, perhaps the most dangerous part of adware is the advertisements that it shows are often to links to other, more serious types of malware, making adware the gateway malware. Another family of malware is spyware. Spyware usually works to steal your information or track the places you've been. Sometimes it tries to be useful, similar to a Trojan, by pretending to be a toolbar for your internet browser. But in the background, it is secretly re redirecting you to malicious websites or recording your keystrokes. Spyware typically doesn't directly damage your computer, but it will try to actively steal your identity and your money. The last common family of malware that we'll take a look at is ransomware. Ransomware is another relatively new style of malware that is becoming increasingly popular. Ransomware locks the user out of their own computer and threatens to delete the information unless the victim pays the ransom. Commonly, ransom needs to be paid using a cryptocurrency, such as Bitcoin. Other ransomware pretends to be the FBI or CIA claiming you have illegal material and need to pay a fine in order to avoid going to jail. Many businesses and local governments have paid the ransom for fear of bad publicity or risk of losing all of their data. While there are many other types of malware that exist today, worrying about all the differences and definitions isn't overly practical. So let's take a quick look at a few tips for avoiding malware. First is to understand what activities put you at a higher risk of encountering malware. Here's a list of a few high-risk activities in no particular order. Visiting the so-called adult websites. Most companies have it in their security policies not to visit these types of websites. 
It isn't because they know you aren't being productive on company time. It's because these websites are a threat to computer security. These websites contain lots of pictures, videos, advertisements, and downloads, all of which are great for distributing malware. And people usually aren't thinking about security when they visit these websites, which is also great for an attacker trying to infect the computer. Email is another popular location for spreading malware. While it is unreasonable to avoid email altogether, be especially cautious of emails containing links and attachments. Foreign websites are another location where you are more likely to encounter malware. This stems mostly from the fact that there is no internet police. Attackers in other countries aren't directly affected by US laws and therefore they don't get arrested. This typically happens when the country involved is in a cooperative com country. Free downloads and file sharing websites are another place where you are more likely to encounter malware. As an attacker, I could take a legitimate file, infect the file with malware, and then share it with many people using these free downloading services. Saying, I'm careful when I download free stuff, really doesn't cut it anymore. The same concept applies directly to free third-party software as well. There is a lot of good, free, freely available software on the internet, but always try to confirm with multiple sources that any piece of free software isn't actually malware. And finally, the curious clicking mentality is very bad for security. No, you did not win a free tablet or smartphone. No, you will not learn the one secret the president does not want you to know. No, you do not need to learn about the top 10 miracle drugs of this year. Just don't click it. So we'll end with reviewing a few good security practices for avoiding malware. To start, do your best to avoid the previously discussed high-risk activities. Email and downloads are great, but they require a constant security awareness. Having up-to-date software is key for defending against modern malware. Hopefully at the office, your IT people are handling this for you, but out-of-date software messages should not be blindly ignored. Learn what normal is for your computer. If you know how your computer and network usually behave, you will be more likely to notice when something is different. Malware is a slippery slope and the first compromise often leads to more. If there is an infection, stopping it ASAP is crucial. And finally, when in doubt, always ask. Don't get in the habit of clicking the X, closing your eyes, tapping your heels, and pretending it will all go away by itself. Malware is a serious threat, but security awareness and good habits can go a long way to maintaining a proper defense.